So a, a mentor of mine who was a, a depth psychologist, Joe uh, Copen, once told a group of us that were gathered that the words we use use us. The words we use use us. And this group of class students, all training to be psychologists, we had this one word that kept showing up in the group during our discussion, and it was in our readings of old psychology texts, words that we would never use today, but we had to read because you had to read it. And we had to keep saying this word over and over again in the class until we realized tearfully that for some people, this word was like receiving a tiny cut every time it was said. And others were taken quite by surprise, not even realizing that this word would cause any harm at all. And so the class was paused. Our professor gave us this assignment. Go home, take out a piece of paper, imagine being a therapist of some kind, and this word has just walked into your office. Don't question what you write. Just respond to the word and the word's genuine desire to be seen, to be hosted, and to be in dialogue with you. Of course, there were many questions about how we would do it right. How could we write the assignment right? What was the right way to respond to the imaginary word in the imaginary therapist's office to do it imaginarily right ways? Joe said, don't think about it, just do it. So we returned to the next class with all of our papers written, eagerly wanting to know who did it right. Some of us had written poetry. We offered the word a poem in return for its presence with us for just a little while, surprising ourselves with words and images and metaphors. Some of us offered the word to sit down. We tried to figure out the word's favorite food, what could we convince it to eat to tell us more? Some of us wrote prayers for the word because the word had traveled such a long distance through history and was carrying such a heavy backpack that it could no longer breathe. Some of us just asked the word a lot of questions. Why did you come to me this way? Why are you showing up here? Why have you done what you've done? And of course the word, feeling defensive, unsurprisingly responded back with plenty of questions. Who are you to ask me questions, said the word. What would you do if you were not afraid of me? What would you do if you believed I were true? Some people consulted dictionary.com. They wanted to know the history of the word, the word's shape, its sound, its synonyms. Some people wanted to build an entire family of cognates around the world to know that the word had a family offering the rest of its language. And some people made a big deal about hospitality. Some people made sure the word had enough space at the table, that there was good food. They imagined the exact food that they would want, imagined the word needing Kleenex as it spoke its story. Some people imagine the word checking its cell phone and posting selfies on Facebook. Very imaginative. And some were in dialogue with the word, a back and forth exchange, the person telling the word what it was like for the word to be said. The harm that the word had caused or the joy that it had brought. And the word responded in ways that made the questioner soften and relax. Does this seem silly to you? Now, Tara says no, but that's her job. Uh, Tara, you know, Tara, that's your job. Very, very pastoral, Tara. Does this seem silly to you? Kind of, kind of, sort of, no, I see, yeah, I see a mix. Yeah, what, what, yeah, there's some skepticism in the back, scrunched up face, tilted head, yeah, I like that. That's honest, Roy's smiling, didn't know he'd get called out. You did. Yeah, yeah, this is kind of a weird little exercise, right? This kind of word therapy. What do we do with words? Well, this seems silly, it might seem like my goat story. You might wonder what happened to me this week that I'm bringing so many silly ideas to church. Trust me, this is not silly, but this is what words require of us. 
our participation in their livelihood. Words do not exist outside us using them. And when they are used, they will shape the world we live in. If we use a word, we create a world. And when you create worlds, you make up the words to describe it. Words matter. How we use them matters. If we make them dead and we don't let them live and breathe and tell us something new, it matters. So this is ethically and spiritually significant, even though silly, possibly. If the words we use use us and act on us and can limit or expand us, we'd better take good care of them. To notice when a word has been bogged down by too heavy a backpack with too many sharp objects by the dominant culture matters. And to invite a word to speak to us with the values of our faith. Meaning, what can a word help us do and tell us about interdependent liberation? What can a word help us do to remind us that in the words of Reverend Teresa Inez Soto, all of us need all of us to make it. How do we make words work for that goal? So the word in that class was not power, but it could have been. Each of you today have been holding a place in your life where you were asking for a greater sense of your own power. And I imagine that a few of us, when we heard that, might have been like, oh, no, 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 not me. I don't need power. I'm not a leader. Having power means I'm supposed to be a leader. That's too scary. Or no, no, no. I'm not power hungry like that. Or for some of us, power is a four-letter word. We have such upset feelings about what it means. And for some of us, we've seen and experienced so much abuse of power, if not now, in our country right now, that the very feeling of power might leave us aching and nauseous. And for some of us, we get so little power that we fear maybe even losing the little bit of power we have. And so we're wary to even imagine what power might look like. We might want to cry. We might want to sigh. We might want to walk away, all because of a word power. So power is one of these words that could leave us all a little cut up. And that's okay. We don't have to make sense of what power means today. However, what I want us to do is a little bit of word therapy. So because power has been tortured by our national politic, our role now will be to host power so that it does not limit us, but that maybe it might expand us individually and as community. So if you'll humor me, I invite you into a spirit of imagination. And for those of you where it is more comfortable to close your eyes, I invite you to close your eyes. And for those of you where it is more comfortable to put your eyes down, to downcast your eyes, to soften your eyes, I invite you to do whatever is comfortable to be in a spirit or place of imagination. I want you to imagine that power just walked into the sanctuary. And I want you to imagine that power wandered through the garden and ran into Tara in the back and signed the guest book and that power poured themselves a cup of coffee and that power is awkwardly trying to figure out our new text to give option. Just like each of us entering a new space, imagine power to be vulnerable and new in this place. Imagine that power just sat down tentatively in the pew next to you and imagine that you just noticed them as if for the first time. And for some of us, this might be hard. We might be judging these images. The only thing we have to do is to notice what image arise. And even if you made it up in your mind, that's how all great ideas are made. 
Imagine that power looks at you with the kind of longing one has when they've been worn a little too thin and they don't know what page the hymn is on and they are vulnerable and seeking a place to find themselves again. And they are a little tired and a little aching and you can see it in their eyes. Notice how does power show up for you? How do they seem? What are they wearing? Just take them in. Ask power what brings them to you and this community now and listen to what they say. You might ask, Power, what would help you relax right now and tell me more about who you are truly? And listen. If power makes a request, and it seems reasonable for you, you might even try it. You might tell them what it is like for you to see them here now at this moment in your life and see what they say back to you. You might tell them what scares you about them or what hurts you about them and see how they respond. You might ask them, what do you wish I could hear about you? You might ask them, in my own life right now, where are you? Where could I find you? Listen. And as the time is almost up and power looks hungry for vegetarian and vegan food and true Paul, ask them this last question, power, what is your prayer or hope for me at this time in this world? What is power's prayer for you? Let that prayer, let what emerged from power in these few minutes come into a phrase or a sentence that you might carry with you moving forward. And let that phrase or sentence rise up within you, perhaps from your own mind, perhaps with a sense of the sacred. But let that phrase show up in a power of imagination. And in a spirit of gratitude to mystery 
and to our minds and to our bodies and to matter and to imagination, you might offer a thank you or a word of gratitude that you had a moment inside of yourself to dream a new world and new word into becoming. May it be so. Gonna keep on moving forward